Now, in the last video of this course, we looked at how we could define structs within Go. In this video, we're going to be taking that one step further and looking at how we could define methods which effectively add functionality on top of our struct definitions. Now, in the previous video, we defined an engineer struct which has a number of fields such as name, age, and the project. Now, what happens if we want to define a method which helps us to effectively print this out in a way that is nice and readable for people that want to examine an engineer? Well, let's take a look at that now. So the first thing I'm going to do is define a function and it's going to take in a receiver for the function. So this is going to be E and in this case, it's going to be of type engineer and let's call the method print. Now, when I say receiver, I am effectively talking about this section of the code here. Now, this is an, an example of a value receiver for the method print. Now, you could either have a value receiver or a pointer receiver, which effectively uses the pointer to the engineer struct. However, as we haven't yet covered pointers, I'm going to leave out pointer receivers for now, and we're just going to focus on value receivers like so. Cool. So let's take a look at how we could define this print method. Well, I could do something like this. So FMT print line and engineer information. And let's do something like format. And we could say name is equal to percentage s. We could pass in the value receiver dot name. So e dot name. And let's add a new line character. We could then do age and change the format string and then change it to e.age. And then let's do the current project. So print f current project. And this is going to be percentage s slash n for the new line character. And then let's use e dot project dot name like so cool so we've we have effectively defined the print method on top of the engineer struct with this in place let's take a look at how we could call this print method well if you remember in the last video we looked at instantiating an engineer struct with all of the information so let's replace this fmt.println with e.print like so or engineer.print I should say and this is an example as to how we could effectively call the method print on top of the engineer struct that we've instantiated here cool so let's go run main.go and as you can see it's been successful in calling the method that we've defined it's printed out the name the age and the current project that I am currently working on. So the print method that we have currently just executes a number of format.println and printf statements. But how would you go about creating a method that returns a value or updates a value on the existing struct? Well, I'm going to encourage you to pause the video at this point and I'm going to ask you to try and implement your own version of a method that will effectively allow us to update the age of the engineer. Cool. So now that you've had an attempt at that yourself, let's have a look at how we could do it together. So let's define a new function or method, I should say, that takes in a value receiver and let's call it update age. And in this case, we just want to increment the value of age. So let's do E dot age plus equals one, like so. Let's come down here and let's call engineer dot update age. So let's run through our expectations here. The age is currently 27. We want to call the update age method here. And this should effectively increment the value of the age field to 28 and then we print this out go run main.go and as you can see it hasn't been able to do this 
Now, the exact reason for this is that we've used a value receiver here. Now, I mentioned this at the start, that there were two types of receivers. Now, the way we can fix this is effectively using a pointer receiver. And this will take in a pointer to the existing engineer struct, and it will then update the value at that memory address to age 28. And then we, when we run this again, we should see the correct, if we save it as, we should see the correct age after the point at which we've called this update age method here. Now, I know I said at the start that we'd be covering just the value receivers, but I thought this was important to highlight as this has caught out a number of my students in the past. So if you're ever in the, the position where you're not seeing the values of the existing struct or the underlying struct being updated pr properly, it's likely because you're using a value receiver as opposed to a pointer receiver. So bear this in mind when you're defining your methods. Cool. So now that we've looked at how we can create a, a method that updates a field on the underlying engineer struct, let's have a look at how we can define a method that returns a value. So in terms of the receiver type, we have a choice here. If we're going to be updating the underlying fields, we could certainly use a pointer receiver. If we're not going to be updating the underlying fields, then there's no harm in using a value receiver. However, I tend to err on the side of caution and always use a pointer receiver just in case we need to update the functionality going forward. So I'm going to use a pointer receiver for this one. Cool. So let's then define the method name. So in this case, I want to define a method that returns the current project priority, for example. So let's do get project priority, priority, like so. And then we can define the return values. So in this case, it's just going to be a string. So we can do return e dot project dot priority, like so. Next, let's navigate down to the main body. And let's do fmt.println engineer dot get project priority. And let's try run this in the terminal. So go run main.go. And as you can see, it's called the print method that we defined, and it's also printed out the returned value from the get priori project priority method that we've defined. Now, one quick thing to note. When we updated both of these methods to use pointer receivers as opposed to value receivers, we did not have to change any of the calls to these methods within the main function. Now Go handles that under the covers for us, so we don't have to worry about these things. Cool. So that's all we're going to cover in this video. Now just to recap, in this video we've looked at how we could define methods that effectively hang off the struct definitions that we've defined in the previous video. and We've looked at how we can use pointer receivers and value receivers differently to do things like update the underlying field values. And we've also looked at how we could do or create methods that return values, such as the get project priority method, which returns a string.